this is the XP 15,000 and this is Epson's replacement model coming from the Epson Artisan 1430 which I had about six of those at one time all running the same time so I am intimately familiar with that printer now this one here has some new features and some additions most notably is the 1430 has 90 print nozzles the Artisan XP 15,000 has 180 nozzles so you do get much nicer prints from this printer print speeds this does print a little bit faster not as not much not a lot faster um, but it does have some features that make it nice it has a duplexer in the back uh, it's automatically comes with it you don't need to upgrade it the rear feed slot is a center feed instead of on the right hand side which I prefer because it feels more precise I'll go ahead and lift this open. You can print while watching it. Uh, you can watch it while it's printing. If you open this while it's printing, it is not going to be a problem. And you'll see it still has six inks. However, they have changed the inks. They've taken away the light magenta and light cyan, added a red and a gray. These are these two are my last of the original OEM inks, and these are third-party inks. I will put links in the description below should you choose to either purchase this printer or if you need ink for this printer from third party. So what else does it do? It still prints the same print size, the 13 by 19 up to 13 by 19. It also prints uh, four by six sheets. It has a retractable tray. We'll go ahead and uh, go back and see. It has an automatic tray. Now that is the this is the tray that I'm referring to. Once it prints the picture, it rests it on that. Below that is a 200 sheet paper tray, which is adjustable. And for some reason, I still don't, I've never used it on any of my printers. I have a CD printable option, something that I've never used and I never plan on using. Over here on the control panel, it is not a touch screen. Some people prefer touch screen. I don't. You get fingerprints all over it. You have the buttons and a full color display, which I find to be quite handy. Connectivity, you have a USB port in the back, Wi-Fi and Ethernet in the back. Now, if you are printing, um, anything either black and white or something with oranges or reds in it you will find a significant uh, difference between the two the 1430 never had a shade of gray this one has one shade of gray however compared it is a lot closer to what you're looking at here the Canon Pro 100 which has two shades of gray so black two shades of gray black and one shade of gray it is a very close second to the Canon in fact if you have them side by side you would probably pick the Canon however if you didn't have it side by side and it actually gives you options when you're printing to have cold neutral or warm black and white so it does add a little bit of color and I will show you those prints in a moment now Here's another thing to consider when you're buying or if you're considering this printer. The printer cartridges are very small. This is the OEM printer cartridge. Let's see if we can get it to focus here. There we go. It is much smaller. I've been burning through ink. It is a lot more expensive also as the CIS option is not available at the time of making this video hopefully it will be another thing that you will notice with this printer is that it has a print feed system sim more similar to the Canons where it's just a mesh versus the 1430 that has a uh, actual almost like a cone shaped nozzle that the cartridges slip down and fit on so I have gone through uh, quite a bit of ink, some shades more than others, 
but it does print a lot more higher resolution, faster, it's also quieter. And uh, so those are some of my main, my first impressions. And do I like the printer? Yes, I do. Um, it is a price point the same as the 1430. I just wish that the ink system was a little bit cheaper. I got used to having a CIS, so hopefully some third party develops one that I will immediately install in here. But it does do a fantastic job. Very crisp prints, a lot quieter than the 1430. It is narrower, so I in the future I wanted, I could probably fit, uh, instead of having six 1430s, I could possibly fit seven XP 15,000s. Now for this video, I did a side-by-side, by-side comparison of the 1430 to the 15,000 to a Canon Pro 100 printing a 300 DPI 8x10 black and white print on the highest quality settings on glossy photo paper. Now the 1430 didn't stand a chance compared to the other two. It took four minutes and 13 seconds, so by far the longest. And the quality, the picture quality, you don't see any of the uh, mid-tones or any ranges on the black and white scale. And it kind of came out looking bluish green. You can't really tell on the camera, but it did. Now the 15,000 came in second place on both. Came in second place on the print quality. It really does look nice. Um, and it is uh, a little bit faster, about 30 seconds faster. 3 minutes and 42 seconds to print this size print. And compared to the Canon Pro 100, which printed the fastest at 2 minutes and 23 seconds. So it's way faster. And it the print quality, because it has a light gray and a gray, remember the XP15000 only has gray. So if you consider that, the XP15000 really did a fantastic job keeping up on print quality. However, it did not keep up on speed where the Canon came in over a minute faster. Here I will show you side by side by side. Now this one has uh, more of a neutral tone. This, this is the Epson XP15000 which has a higher sepia tone. And this one here comes out kind of blue green. You can't really tell on the camera but it just doesn't look very nice and the ranges aren't very deep. But that's what you get from the X, uh, the 1430, which does not have any shades of gray. So we'll just count this out entirely. You can't even see, it just goes to mud in any of the darker areas. But if we go over to here, it is uh, with the extra gray cartridge, the Canon Pro 100 wins. However, this is a very good um, option. I'm, I'm actually quite pleased with this running off of a gray and a black, and this one running off of three shades of gray. Black, gray, and light gray. But you do get more detail, more gradients, as you would expect from more gray shades. So anyway, that's the side-by-side-by-side uh, -side -by -side comparison of a black and white print. So the XP15000 does a very good job in the black and white print, uh, especially compared to the, the uh, older 1430 that the 15000 has replaced. Now, you might be looking at this and saying, I like this black and white picture better than the others, but you aren't seeing the gray on the camera. Or the green. You're not seeing the green. So just take that into consideration. This, I would say, is the most uh, accurate black and white photograph. This one, when set to neutral, has a warmer tone to it. So just be aware of that. Now, if you're transferring or switching from the Artisan 1430 to the XP 
15,000, you cannot take your cartridges along with you. The 1430 uses 79, number 79 cartridges, and the 15,000 uses 312. So you cannot do that, but does it do heat transfers? Uh, you can print with the Jet Pro inkjet transfers, and it will work. Um, so just know that. As far as print sizes, it can print everywhere from 4x6s up to 13x19s. Now, I have had success printing with heavy cardstock through this printer, but I have not had any success whatsoever printing canvas. So if that's something you're looking for, you'll have to look for another printer. Now the ink used in the 15,000 is the Claria Photo High Definition Dye Based Ink. So it is not a pigment ink, which has its own benefits and drawbacks. Another thing that you may wonder about is, no, it does not use a roll, and there is no roll attachment, at least as of yet, it just has the duplexer. This also does not work as a sublimation printer at least with the ink that is installed and we'll see if the future allows or if people create options to convert it to a sublimation printer but it does not work as a sublimation printer out of the box so who is this printer for this printer is for somebody who maybe is an artist and does not print high volume every day I do print high volume every day and so I will save this for maybe my 13 by 19 prints um, that I want a very nice color and high quality but it is not a workhorse printer at least in the way that I'm using it. That is my in-depth review of the Epson XP15000. Let me know if I did not answer the question that you hoped to have answered in this video. I tried to make it as uh, exhaustive as possible, but there's always something that's going to be missed. If you are getting this printer, let me know in the comments section, or if you opted for something different and why, I would love to know. I, I buy printers all the time, I use them all the time, and so I'm always trying to learn more about the models that are out there and what they do. So subscribe if you want more printer-related tech videos. And please leave a comment or a like in the section below. It would be very helpful to me. I hope this helps and have a great day.